Just gonna start recording like that. <laughs> what is good, Boom Crew? It's your girl Annie Mo Fanny, and I'm just gonna do a little quick uh, chit chat with you guys. I'm trying to get my wig to look decent. I tried to clean up the lace as much as possible. Um, yeah, I'm not really worried about that because my hair comes down over that part. So, I'm just upset because, damn, I did it again. When I take this off, it'll be pulling my hair because I ain't got no wig cap on. Because, um, y'all know that black wig that I got? Uh, it's actually a real wig. It's like human hair and everything. Um, I had put that on like I got my hair braided and then I put that on Hold on and um and this is not the first time that this has happened but I got my hair braided put that on and then I'm feeling like this really sore spot on the right side of my hairline and this happened this happened several times, like I just said, but it wasn't so obvious where I thought, you know what I'm about to tell y'all. So I'm like, all right, you know, I'm trying to like, you know, press it and just, you know, I don't know what it was. I, I couldn't figure out what it was. So it got so, it, it was so sore that I ended up having to remove the wig or whatever. And, um, Cause I can't, I can't walk and chew gum. I don't know how people do this shit. I ended up having to remove the wig, and I was planning on like actually just you know keeping the wig on and then you know refreshing the baby hairs and you know whatever. Cause I'm doing this little five month challenge, um, five month hair growth challenge with using only my products. So I wanted to just wear the wig and then when I need to wash my braids and stuff, I was gonna take it off and then reinstall it. So long story long, that sore spot got so bad I had to take that wig off. So I'm looking and on this side of my head, it was like little bumps and it was like a bigger sore right there. So I was like, this is how people be losing their hairline. Now I never had issues with my hairline um my right side is a little thinner than my left side it's been like that for a while i had got this bad sewing so it wasn't bad but this girl some years back did a sewing on me and the thread was too tight on the right side of my head and since then that that hair right there has been kind of um I know I'm not doing this the perfect way. I'm just making it so that, you know, when I push my hair back, when it's in my face, it don't look too bad. Like that. Yeah, so if I do that, I'm piercing. So if I do that, it doesn't look too bad. That's why I'm doing it like that. But for this to be a synthetic wig, I don't think it's bad. What do y'all think? You know, synthetic wigs, you gotta comb them a little more, but nothing too crazy. And this is what I use. This is what I've been using. It's been okay for my skin. Um, but back to what I was saying. Um, I am having issues with my skin in regards to like anything that's like an adhesive or anything like that. I have a latex allergy really bad. But now I've been noticing recently, like my skin sensitivity has gotten even worse. Um, I've always had uh, somewhat sensitive skin. Uh, I take good care of my skin for the most part recently. I kind of slacked off a little bit, a little stress or whatever, but you know, ain't nothing that my products can't fix. So 
with that being said should i leave it like that it looks melted just looking at me like that but i'm looking you know these hotel mirrors with the lighting the fucking <laughs> like literally on camera it looks good i'm looking like this and i'm like oh that look like that look like lace um so yeah i'm just trying to figure out what i want to do let me let me add a little baby hair here just in case somebody wanna zoom in on my shit. All up in my motherfucking business. So anyway, I I have to accept that I have an allergy to like certain stuff because um I remember years back I had some issue with my feet, my toes specifically. And I went to the, I think it's called the podiatrist, podiatrist, podi I don't know how to say it, the foot doctor. And um, she was some young white girl. And she was like, cool, but she was like, yeah, you have an allergy to some, some material in this shoe. So I told people that, and I had made a joke about it, like, oh, if you see me in the winter time with chancletas on, don't say nothing, blah, 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 because I was really having a lot of issues with my skin on my feet at the time. So, anyway, okay, this should be enough. This should be enough. Like, I'm not about to be out here looking like I got a line up. Um, so... That was that. that. And I'm talking about that was years, years ago type of shit. So I ain't paying no mind. I kind of forgot about it. Um, and then I feel like after I had COVID, I had, I was, I had a, a Band-Aid on. And y'all, the Band-Aid broke me out so bad. I had, when I had the um, heart murmur thing. When I had the heart murmur. When I had the... What's the the thing to check the heart or whatever? And I had it on. Oh, it's sticky. Okay. And I had it on. And that adhesive, when I say it, they may put a hole in my skin. Y'all, that shit was terrible. This part of the head never want to sit, sit down. Like, sit the fuck down. What's the issue? As long as I don't do this, I'm all right. And most likely I'm going to do that, but whatever. Stab my face. And, um, so the adhesive broke me out real hard. I'm like, damn. And then another time I was somewhere, you know, you get blood work. Um, and they put a bandaid on me. And as soon as they put the bandaid on, my skin started burning. I'm talking about burning, burning. And I'm like, oh, I have it. I, I feel like I have a, some type of. I know that I have some type of allergy to some like glues and adhesives. I don't know if it's like a specific chemical in it. I don't know if it's like certain name, but I don't know. Because when I put that wig on and I had that glue on my hairline, y'all. I said, oh yeah, baby, something going on. So I can't even wear fucking, um, I can't wear band-aids. I can't really glue my hair down. And then... I was telling my son the other day, and I was like, I don't know if adhesive, ha adhesive, I don't know if elastic got something in it, because I've been noticing that my skin has been just itching with, like, regular fucking clothes on. And I haven't changed my, my dish, my dish, my laundry thing. Y'all know I don't know English. Stop fucking bothering me. I haven't changed my laundry detergent. Been the same laundry detergent since forever. So, um, oh, I wanted to show y'all. These are the lashes I bought from, damn, there it go, from Amazon. These are the lashes that I have on now. They're not too dramatic. Well, the, the set, I, I put on the set, the sets that was at the bottom. And I didn't even put on the full set that was up there. The higher it goes, the longer it gets. So I, not even paying attention, put the ones that was on at the bottom. And I would have preferred a little bit more of a dramatic look. I don't like big, thick, crazy looking lashes. Y'all never see me in no shit like that. But um, 
this is giving I just put mascara on and I really wanted something a little bit more obvious um so but what can I say about this the it, it's good I don't have any issues the my corner lash on this side uh just came off today I've had them on for I put these on Wednesday night and today is Friday um, took a shower, washed my face and all of that. Um, little to no irritation. Some of the lashes I did put a little too close to the pink part of my eyelid and I do have contacts on. So it was some slight irritation on this side, but with the exception of that, um, I'm not having an issue. And like I said, I have a sensitivity to glue, apparently. Um, but I put this bonding glue on and I'm not having any issues. Um, so yeah. Um, so that's that. I'm gonna, this is gonna dry and it's gonna be a little white, so I'm gonna wipe that down. Uh, what else? So let me show y'all how I be doing my lips or whatever, because y'all know I don't do makeup and shit like that, but I be trying to wear my little lipstick and shit like that. <laughs> Why am I being such a bird today? Yeah, my teeth is starting to spread again, because, um, yeah, I wasn't able to finish the whole Invisalign process, so I have an appointment on November 3rd. And hopefully, <clears throat> my job can cover the cost. Uh, uh, yeah, I hate how I did that. Because I don't need to overdraw my lips. I look big enough. Not my lips shaking like that. <laughs> the fuck? Calm down. Yeah, so I'll fix that in the bathroom. I'm used to being closer to the mirror, so this is kind of awkward to me. So this is Maybelline. I'm trying to show you, but Maybelline. I don't know if it's called Stay Ink. Maybelline New York Stay. I don't know if it's called like Stay Ink or whatever. I forgot what it's called, but it's really long lasting. Like I eat with this on, and I don't be having no issues. Some colors perform better than others. Like I have this berry color and it don't really sit on my lips. The way the burgundy does or cause I also have this color. This is like my go-to color. Um, so yeah. I'm one of them bitches that don't fucking wear makeup like that. I just put on one little lipstick. Mm. Mm, gotta even it out. Yeah, so that's what I do. Get it off my teeth. And then, this is my... Uh, I don't know who the fuck Poppy Ivy is. But this is by... Let's see this. This is my go-to eyebrow color. It's like a, a berry. I just love the way this looks on my skin. I'll be wearing this shit even when it don't match the shit. I don't care. I get compliments on it though. 
Excuse me. Oh, yeah, my skin looks crazy, bro. Oh, that's what I meant to do. I meant to... My best friend told me about... And she let me use her... Um... Primer from Urban Decay. I think it was the primer from Urban Decay and the setting spray from Fenty or the opposite. I don't know. Um, and I wasn't a believer because I'm like, how does shit make this shit stay in your face? Blah, blah, blah. But honestly, when we was in Bahamas and she let me use it, I went to sleep my eyebrows on and it was still essentially intact. This is not coming out right because I'm not in the right mirror, so I might not be able to do this. But here, let's see, try my best. Gosh, I don't play about these eyebrows now. So let me tell y'all, I had invited, um, my homegirl Naja, but she couldn't make it understandably because she had a little gig calling her man. Had to go make some money. So that's fine. So I'm like, I I took this is I booked this room last minute. So by the time I told Lisa she couldn't make it or whatever. And then <clears throat> I told my friend Shantine, y'all met Shantine, y'all met all these people. And she had something else that she had to do. Or whatever. So I'm sorry. This is one of those. Uh, it, it follows you. You see? So, um, yeah, it's one of those things. Okay. I can dig it. Uh, so, like I was saying, so everybody essentially has something to do. Eric is out in Delaware, and I thought it was pretty last minute, because I, I, I booked this for Thursday. Y'all see what I said with this fucking hair right here? I'm about to cut that whole shit off. Um, yeah, so, like I said, last minute. People have lives, people have things to do. But I had asked somebody, did he want to come? And he agreed essentially, but he's like that his mother's birthday was coming up. So I'm like, okay, cool. So instead of him following up and saying that he won't be able to make it, blah, blah, blah. blah he doesn't follow up. But I'm only telling y'all this because I'm about to tell y'all this whole fucking story about this nigga. So there's this dude. And the only reason I'm telling y'all this is because I've decided that I don't want to move forward with even with any type of romantic thing with him. Or whatever. So there's this dude. Um, and... I'm sorry, I'm trying to get this shit right. Bruh. Calm down. Because now I'm about to fucking curse. I'm about to run out. Like a good neighbor, stay for is there. I'm sorry, y'all. I know I get distracted easily. But if you're an OG, you know the vibe. <laughs> the fuck you still getting mad for? So let me just do this one last step before I tell y'all this bullshit. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in the bathroom and make these look a little better because the shape and uh, the sharpness of the eye and everything is not how I want it. Like this is a little too thick. Right? Like I gotta fix this. So I got the base down, so I'm all right. I want to take a little drink, but I ain't really eat nothing. 
I'm gonna go downstairs and give me some. I think I got a little cramps and it's weird because I just got off my period, but when I'm stressed or under a lot of stress, I spot. So maybe I must start spotting. So put that to the side. Put that to the side. And I'm gonna eat a protein um, protein bar in a minute. So, anyways, let me tell you about old boy. So, old boy to me is somebody that I knew for years. When I say years, I mean like since I was like 21 or some shit like that. Like I've known him. With that being said, way back then, because <laughs> I'm 35 now. Um, he tried to kick it to me, but, you know, I wasn't interested. You know, whatever. At the time, I just wasn't interested. And I was with... Relax! And I was with um, my boyfriend at the time. That's the guy that I was with for, like, seven years or whatever. So, he was taking care of me, and I just wasn't interested in checking for no other nigga. Long story short, years pass or whatever, and I would occasionally say... What are we going to call this guy? I don't want to call him this particular name because it's kind of disrespectful. Um, I'm gonna call him. Damn, I'm trying to think of a name. I'm gonna call him. Um. What a good name for this nigga. What am I gonna call him? Okay, I'm gonna just call him Miss Mr. Could I call him Mr. Smooth Talker? And he no, it's not really smooth talker, it's like broken promises. <laughs> That's what the fuck I'm gonna call him. No, I'm gonna call him no energy. Okay, no energy. So, and y'all will see why, why I'm telling y'all this in a minute. So anyway, so over the years, I will run into no energy or whatever, whatever. And of course, he'll say his little two cents about how you feel about me and, you know, whatever. I just wasn't taking it seriously. And, um, and I'm going to get into all the reasons why, whatever. So he doesn't live far from me. So like I said, I would see him, you know, a good amount of time, not every day but it's like you know there was a there's a high possibility if i walk outside and go to the store i could run into him or whatever so i would see him he always asked about my son we always chit chat he would tell me about relationships that he was in that didn't work and if i was with somebody at the time because at this point i'm no longer with with um the african dude so you know we would vent about whoever we were with in a relationship I mean yeah in a relationship with right so that's the vibe that me and him had although I knew he had feelings for me I we never crossed that line or whatever um it probably was a little flirty flirty here and there but it was never anything serious so one day some years back um this was pre-pandemic um uh he he um basically push the issue again like yo i think we should give this a try blah 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 so i'm like you know what let me give this man a chance because it has been years and he has you know every time he sees me he makes it his business to tell me how he feels about me so i say to him i'm like all right bet nothing crazy i'm just like let's see where this goes or whatever let me see you know where you at so it turned into like him always wanting to come to my house and, and be like oh what you cooking today oh you got a bottle and it was just like this always wanted to come over and and take 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 it's not like you coming over bringing groceries or or for courting me or anything like that like i said this is pre-pandemic this is like 2018 probably not even that maybe 27 i can't even recall so um with that being said um I just, 
and then it was on top of that he just had this thing where it was just like he would talk about women all the time and i'm not talking about like bashing women because there's niggas that do that I'm talking about like his obsession with like you know he go on his you go on his page he got he follow a mad different girl it was just like you clearly not ready to be in a relationship which is fine you know what I'm saying like me and you is cool we ain't got to press the issue so and I I do have to give a disclaimer this dude is like six foot four nicely built tattoos beautiful teeth type of shit he a fly nigga he 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 turned heads um but his energy has never been assertive enough for me. His energy has never been that, oh, he's giving me, he's ready for something serious. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I never really entertained him. And then when I did, okay, like, let's see where this goes. It was just like, yeah, this already validated what I already thought about you. You're not really trying to make no moves. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're just trying to lay up type of shit, play house type of shit or whatever. But another disclaimer is, He's ev the, the the amount of times this man has asked me to have a baby for him is crazy. Like he wants a baby badly. He wants a baby badly, and he saw how I raised my son and how I was with my son, especially when he was younger. Like I didn't play about school, and my son was always in some type of sports or activity or after school program, and you know whatever. Um, so. In his mind, it's like, oh, okay, this is a woman that can really rear a child. So he doesn't have any children. To this day, he doesn't have any children. Children. So he would always ask me to have his baby. So I would entertain the conversation. But in my head, I was like, yeah, I'm not really having this dude, baby. Because I already had my son at a young age. And it taught me a lesson. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want my child to grow up in a two-parent house. And this dude is clearly not ready to be, you know, in that type of situation. But I did tell him, he was like, yo, I really want a baby, blah, blah, blah. So there would be times where I would consider it, but I'm like, yeah, I'm not that, that, I'm not on that type of time with this man. So long story short, one day he asked me to have the baby. He was like, oh, he really want to have a baby, blah, blah, blah. He think that we should really give it a try. And he think that we should um, try to be with each other again. This is that and the third. And I had to tell him like, hey, you know, I want marriage. You know, I didn't always want marriage, but at this point in my life, I do want marriage. Um, so this was a few years back when I, where I had decided, oh, I want marriage. So this is after I gave him a try and then I just decided that it wasn't going to work. Like I said, I would see him occasionally and we would have these conversations. So he brings up the fact that he wants a baby and he wants to be with me and he wants to blah, blah, blah. And I have to tell him like, um, yeah, no, I want marriage, blah, blah, blah. So we never... The, from that one time I gave him a chance, I never gave him a, a real chance after that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would see him in the street, tell him I love him. He would tell me he loved me, and he would tell me about his girlfriend because he'll get a new girlfriend, and I'll tell him about whatever uh, boyfriend I was with at the time, like when I was mis with Mr. Crush, and uh, me and Mr. Crush broke up or whatever, whatever. It was like that type of thing. Cool. When I say me and this man never had intercourse, me and this man did not even kiss like we tap kiss one time so when i say i really set boundaries with this person because he was really on some he want to get me pregnant type of shit I, I already knew not to take it there with him because i already knew how it was going to turn out so like i said we seen each other we've been about our relationship blah 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 this is done third so i that's the person that i invited here okay um I invited him here because I knew that I wasn't, how can I say this? Like, I don't, if y'all don't know this, me and Leho are not together. We haven't been together for a little minute now, a good enough amount of time. Y'all know that I've been left Leho mentally. Like, I made a whole video about it, how I was feeling, my, you know, my gripes with him. And I didn't really get into real detail, but let's just say I had mentally left Leho a minute ago. Um, um, so at this point it's like, okay, I'm ready to test the waters or whatever, whatever. So I had seen, what did I say I was going to call him? No energy. I had seen no energy a few times and I had uh, saw him like a couple of weeks back and, um, he hit me up and was like, yo, I really feel like we should give this a try. This is that and the third, whatever, whatever. So I'm like, you know what? 
I feel like I'm giving, I get into these other relationships and I really give these dudes like a try and I have not really given this dude like an absolute chance. You know what I'm saying? Like I gave him a chance before, but it was like, we, we was talking for like two weeks or so and I didn't see what I wanted to see. So I was just like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm good. So this time I'm like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm open to giving him like a real chance. You know what I'm saying? Because when I first met Leho, um, no energy was trying to get with me at the same time. But at that point, Leho had already uh, like inserted himself in my life. Not inserted in like a bad way. I'm saying like I had met him and he was making sure he was taking up my time. So it was like I didn't even have the time to speak to other men when I when I met Leho. It was just like, oh, I met Leho. And then from the day I met him, we was damn near with each other every day. So no energy had hit me up like early in the, like when I started talking to Leho in the beginning. And he was just like, he was trying to be on some like, let's do this type of shit or whatever, whatever. So I kept kind of dubbing him, but I wasn't really saying like, oh, I'm in a relationship or whatever, whatever. Because at this point, me and Leho wasn't official and I still was on the fence about him at the time. So it came down to a point where no energy kind of hit me up and was pressed me about it. And I just had to make a decision. Like, do I go with Leho? Or do I give this dude a try? And I went with Leho, number one, because like I said, he made sure he took up my time. And number two, it was just like, I had already got a preview of no energy. And it was just like, who's to say he's going to be different now? You know what I'm saying? Like, this Leho came along and, and like, basically did more in a shorter period of time in regards to, like, asserting himself and spending time like that than this nigga ever did when he's known me for mad long. You know what I'm saying? So I was just like, I made the decision to be with Leho. So once I made the decision to be with Leho, I stopped entertaining any like conversation about me and no energy being together, like out of respect for my relationship. So with me, there was a, uh, at this point, me and Leho had, kind of we was approaching a year and I run into no energy and he's telling me about his girlfriend or whatever some chick that he says he loves or whatever whatever and he's just saying that they getting into it and blah 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 so he's venting to me about her so I took that as an opportunity to tell him like yeah you know I got a man and I think at the time me and my man was me and Leho was beefing so I was just like, yeah, you know, I'm I'm going through this with him and blah, blah, blah. And this is how I'm feeling. And this, he's not understanding A, B, and C. So we just talking on some friendship. So um, he was like, damn, you had a man this whole time? Because I didn't really tell him. I just stopped entertaining the conversation or whatever. Like, I didn't really solidify it. Like, I had put up a video on YouTube. Well, y'all seen a video that I put up on YouTube. Like, everybody kind of knew. But it wasn't like I was holding a poster up. God, Lee, were you following my face and my hands? It wasn't like I was holding a poster up. So it's it wasn't obvious to somebody who wasn't really paying attention to my page or going on my YouTube or blah, blah, blah. So he's like, damn, you had a man in total? And I was like, yeah, I had a man. He was like, damn, you held it down. Like, you wasn't really. I said, yeah, because, you know, sometimes things don't work. And it's like I didn't want to be embarrassed or whatever, whatever. You see how that turned out. Um, I was like, I didn't want to be embarrassed, blah, blah, blah. So he's like, oh, all right, whatever, whatever. So we left it at that because at this point, um, we both in a relationship. You know what I'm saying? So follow that a little bit. Some time passed or whatever, and I see him. I see him in the gym, and he tells me that him and his girl broke up. And I'm like, damn, that's crazy because me and my man just broke up. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I didn't tell y'all that we had broke up again. Yeah, I saw the, 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 the breakup video, and yeah, I saw that I gave him another chance. And then, um, clearly, I broke up with him again. So, um, I was telling no energy that, like, oh, yeah, me and him broke up, and I just couldn't take it, blah, blah, blah. And he's telling me about, oh, girl, like, all the bullshit, blah, blah, blah. So, I'm giving him a little bit of advice, and he's giving me a little bit of advice, and we're leaving it like that. 
friendship. So he texts me and was just like, yo, um, why am I scared of loving you loving you or some, something like that? And, you know, I replied, but it's like we have these conversations all the time. He Like, he'll text me randomly and be like, yo, like, no other woman understands me or you be... You really, under, oh yeah, basically you really understand me or you be listening to me. And I was telling my homegirl, I was like, this dude feels safe with me and I don't want to be the safe woman. There's nothing, don't bookmark me. Don't just in case me. Don't come back on just in case you, after you run it, run your dick down into the fucking ground. Now you want to be with me because you know I'm the safe space for you. So no. So this is what I'm saying now. When he had messaged me and talking about oh he, um that he loves me and um like why is he so scared or some something like that he says something about that and i was like the same reason why people are scared of success because it's like are you going to be able to handle success when you obtain it you know what i'm saying when you obtain it so i was like you know it it, it doesn't make sense to people how they have access to something or possibly have an opportunity that can be a blessing for them but for some reason they don't pursue it or they don't put the amount of energy that they need to put into, you know, obtaining that or whatever situation is. So I was like, it's the same concept or whatever. So we left it at that or whatever. So after that, I was just like, you know what? If it's not going to be something serious, then it can definitely something that can be something that's like friends with benefits type of shit or whatever. Right? So that's the only reason why I invited him here because although me and him never had sex here, he had already explained that he was going to suck it off the bone. <laughs> okay? He had already said it to me. He said it all the time. Not all the time like he texts me every day. Talking about, I'm talking about when he see me, he be like, what's up? He trying to eat the booty and all of that. So I'm in my head like, you know what? I've accepted that this is not going to be nothing crazy. This can just be some somebody that I am intimate with for my own pleasure, blah, blah, blah. So I had invited him, but like I said, he was like, oh, my mother's birthday is October 19th. Um, I won't be able to, to come out there until the next day. So I was like, okay, cool. But the way he was saying it, it's like, I don't take his word for face value because like, I call him no energy for a reason. It's like, when you see me, you got all this energy and, oh, I want you, I want to be with you and I want to make us work and this is on the third and I want to have, I want you to have my baby. But then it's like, when out of sight, out of mind type of shit, you know what I'm saying? So when I had invited him, I invited him with the idea that I really knew he wasn't really going to come type of shit my ears is ringing um so yeah long story short he was supposed to come but he didn't come but i had saw him the night before i left so i saw him wednesday like i was coming from getting my toes done and i saw him getting off the train or whatever so we talk and whatever and i don't bring up the trip i don't say anything about the trip i'm letting him vent and Another reason why I don't feel like I want to give him a chance is every time I see him, I feel like he's talk, saying, like, talking negative, like he's complaining or venting or ranting about something. And it's like, that's okay sometimes, but it's like the problem with being the safe girl or the girl that men feel emotionally connected to is, number one, they don't consider your emotions. They use you to trauma them. You know what I'm saying? Like, they tell you their deepest, darkest secrets. They tell you all this crazy shit or whatever without any regard to how it's making you feel or what it's doing to you. So, he has the habit of, when I see him, he'll, if he has a girlfriend, he'll tell me all the crazy shit about, talk crazy. If he's going through something with his sister, he'll talk crazy about his sister. Like, you know what I'm saying? Government, black people issues. Like, he's one of those dudes. And it's like... It's to the point where I'll be going through whatever I'm going through. And for me to have to sit there and listen to you talk all this sh negative shit all day, I don't want to fucking hear that. So he did that Wednesday. And I, and I just, it really just, because I had already made my mind up. But you know how I really, like, it really sank in. I was like, yeah, I don't want to be, like, I don't need a nigga like you having sex with me. That's not the energy I want up in me. <laughs> Sorry. Like, I don't want to have a baby by nobody like that. Like, he was complaining about something, and I had to say to him, like, you know, some people are just addicted to stress. <laughs> and when I said that, he kind of was taken aback, but I had to really tell him, like, 
I don't want to tell you what the situation was, but it was just like, why did you even react the way you reacted? Like, why did you engage with that person? Why did it, you know what I'm saying? And we all guilty of it. I'm not holier than thou, but this particular situation, it just really solidified all the other situations that he told me he was in. And I was just like, yeah, you, you doing too much for me. So at the time, like some, some of us are addicted to stress. We're addicted to dysfunction. If something is going right or something seems too good, we, we got to make up a scenario or make it bad or, or say it's going to, you know, like we do that. Some people do it more than others. Some people do it to the point where they can't even fucking help it. And I feel like he does that. So I was in my mind, I was like, yeah, I don't, this is not somebody I want to be in a relationship with. I have not officially told him that, but I am going to tell him that. Um, with that being said, so I'm here, right? And I, I came here to Atlantic City. I'm sorry, I don't know if I told y'all that in this particular video. I got a vlog that I'm putting out, so I'm making two videos. Uh, I'm in Atlantic City, so, and I got a free rooms. That's the only reason why I uh, came out here, because I got some free night stays or whatever. So I'm like, I'm going to relax, and this is down the third. Um, and guess who calls me? Leho. He calls me and he's like, oh, he wants to talk. So at first I wasn't going to reply, but I'm like, go and reply because you treating this person like they garbage on the street. Like I was, I'm not necessarily treating him like that, but it was just like the way, the energy I was giving him, I felt like, all right, like you're being a little too like cold hearted towards him. Like at least acknowledge, you know, acknowledge him. And I didn't have to do that. I don't owe him shit. But I, that's what I told myself. Like, spiritually, I just didn't feel good doing that to him. So I was just like, you know, I re replied or whatever. Long story short, he called me and um, it was, he didn't really say anything that was like, put a light bulb on my head and was just like, yeah, he's, he's really working on it. He's willing to, it's just like, it's kind of this same mundane, nonchalant, I don't know. And okay, I hear you, I apologize type of energy. It's nothing really that's like, wow. I, I see that you really thought about this. You really changed. You really willing to change. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, he, he trying to, he, he would like to get back together. And I just told him that I needed some time to think about it. You know what I'm saying? Because the, the, the list of things, the issues that I have with him is way longer than the good at this point and it's been the same issues piling up piling up and then little little issues adding to them and that's it I gave him so many chances so I told him yesterday when we spoke I was like I am drained <laughs> like y'all know me I would usually make this video my, my my voice start cracking and I would start crying and I'm not even being a I'm, I'm, I'm disassociated. I'm not attached anymore. So I just told him I need some time. I need some time. Like I really, really have to think this over because this is my mind, body, and soul that I'm gambling with. And, um, I don't even know at this point if you're worth the risk, you know what I'm saying? Like that's how I'm feeling. And that might seem harsh or whatever, but the fact is that I gave him way more chances than what I was supposed to. Um, I turned a blind eye to a lot of shit that bothered me. I did not, like, I, I allowed him to to overstep my boundaries more than enough times. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've had enough. And I always tell y'all, I'm not perfect, but there was just some shit that's just like, bruh, you pushed it. You dragged it. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So that's where I'm at right now. Um, that's where I'm at with that situation. I just decided to lay it out all out. Of course, I'm not getting into detail, to exact details of why I left Leho. Um, but I just figured that I just fully come out and say it because, like, I took the videos back down. I, I left the breakup video up type of shit. But I'm just keeping it in a stack with y'all. It's like, it's like I, I understand that it's like a back and forth, wishy-washy, one minute I'm in, one minute I'm out. That's what it appears to be. But y'all know how it is. Golly. Y'all know how it is when you love somebody and you're going through it and you, you're just trying your best to make a decision 
that serves a higher purpose. You know what I'm saying? And that's where I'm at right now. So, um, anyways, that's 4444. The timer was on 4444. So, that's that on that. Um, what y'all think? Can I show y'all my So y'all know that dress that I got, it's like this, but it's orange based. So I re-bought it again with the gray. Can I show y'all? Maybe if I turn the camera around. Damn, I can't really get a good view. I can't get a good view. These shoes is toe up, but I forgot my other heels, y'all. I just put this on just so I can look this and gamble. <laughs> like I didn't, like I had went downstairs to get coffee, and I was like a hot mess. So this don't look too bad. I ain't bring my flat iron. I wish I would have brought my flat iron. But yeah, guys, this is it. This is my outfit. Y'all know me and my little me that me that dresses. <sighs> um, so yeah, I don't have anything else to say right now. I'm going to stop this right here because I still got to do a vlog or whatever. Record the rest of the days I'm here. Ain't not, it's not going to be nothing, anything spectacular. I'm just being an old lady, y'all. Gambling and drinking. Spending a little $40 on a machine. <laughs> yeah, I ain't, I ain't going too crazy. But, um, yes. Deuces. Out. Alright.